This is the M4 Max Mac Studio. This is the M4 Pro Mac Mini. And my AC is blowing that fire into my face. At 256 cubic inches, this computer is glorious. And this little guy, only 50 cubic inches. The studio is actually five times as large as the Mac Mini. And don't get me wrong, it's still a totally reasonable size. It actually fits under my studio display. The Mac Mini is just so tiny. My Windows tower back there is over 2,000 cubic inches. But the actual difference in, for instance, CPU power between these two computers in their default configuration is two cores, two performance CPU cores. That's what separates the M4 Pro Mac Mini from the M4 Max Mac Studio two performance cores. This is a 12 core CPU, this is a 14 core CPU, and both have the same four efficiency cores. The studio gets two additional performance cores. And I don't think people realize that the M4 cores in all of Apple's computers are the same CPUs. So like the M4 MacBook Air CPUs are the same CPU cores as the M4 Max Mac Studio. The studio just has way more of them and it can keep them cooler to prevent thermal throttling. So the size difference between these two computers, I guess, is just all thermal. It's got a few extra ports, but not five times the size worth of extra ports. I guess this guy just needs a lot of thermal headroom for if you go with the ridiculously beefed up ultra version where there are way more CPU cores heating things up. Plug these guys in for the next part. When I run synthetic benchmarks, you get what you'd expect from a computer having two more cores, 22,600 to 19,700. A little less than 15% more power for the Mac Studio. And that's true with both Cinebench and Geekbench. I had some comments saying that Cinebench R23 is not accurate with Apple Silicon. The bigger difference is that the Mac Studio Studio has double the GPUs. But whether you actually need double the GPUs is super dependent on what you're asking these computers to do. Because for instance, I'm gonna open up a Final Cut Pro project. And even with a project that has four 4K cameras and a multi-cam clip, everything running at full resolution, no proxies, with the color grade and with the magic mask cutting out an extra 4K layer so that I can have this animated title floating behind me here. And just for kicks, I threw an arrow in tracked to my hand. You can see that while all this is running, it's only using about 60% of the GPU. And this is running on the Mac Mini with half the GPU of the studio. Just for kicks, let's just toss a cartoon filter on that top layer there. And even then, we're still only at mid 60s GPU usage. So as far as video editing, more GPUs won't change your experience. This isn't dropping any frames. It runs perfectly smoothly. This can scrub perfectly smoothly through the timeline. And you can look, this is all four 4K clips. It's not just on the main clip. The scrubbing's not choppy at all. Nothing's choppy at all. Anywhere you hit play, it's just gonna play. And this is all on the Mac Mini. If I go over to a portion of the video that's just one 4K clip and no effects, now it's using, what, 19% of the GPU, 6% of the CPU, I could click on that. It uses almost no CPU. So it's nuts, but even the weaker of these two computers is already pretty much overkill for video editing. At least the type of video editing you see on my channel, which honestly is equal to or more complex than 99% of YouTube. I saw a Reddit post where someone was asking whether the M4 Max with 64 gigabytes of RAM was enough for Final Cut Pro, or if he needed to move up to the M3 Ultra with 128 gigs of RAM. And I'm over here looking at the activity monitor while this edit is open. Ooh, where'd that go? And we're using what? 19 gigabytes of RAM, 17 gigabytes of RAM, 16, it's jumping around from 16 to 19. So I think that guy could probably skate by with the 64 gigabyte version of the most powerful editing computer Apple has ever made. I will say, and this is important if you make very long videos, not so much if you make like 10 minute videos like I do, but only with the M4 Max and Ultra, when you go to export, and then you go to settings, Final Cut Pro shows you this new little checkbox that says allow export segmentation. This will let your Mac Studio render out multiple portions of that video simultaneously and then combine them together when it's done to greatly speed up the export. And that's because the Max has double the number of media engines, a new piece of hardware in here, and that's where a majority of the export is actually happening. So if I hit export on this video, and if you take a look at the CPU GPU utilization, the computer is not actually working very hard at all. 9% GPU, 18% CPU, 28% CPU. Most of that export is taking place in the media engines. And the M4 Max just has double the media engines of the M4 Pro. So the export, it's not quite twice as fast, but the export will be quite a bit faster. Looking at the hardware differences between the two, and I don't want to spend too much time on this. It's fairly obvious. The studio has four Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back and two more 10 gig USB-C ports on the front, where the Mac Mini has three Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back and two more USB-C ports on the front. The studio has a built-in SD card reader and some old-timey USB-A ports for your 
keyboard and mouse, no card reader or USB-A on the mini, so you'll be stuck using one of these hubs, which has both, and on the hub, the USB card reader will be a little slower. And finally, the studio comes with built-in 10 gigabit ethernet, where the mini comes with one gigabit ethernet. By default, you can upgrade to 10. Or you can get another dongle. This is a 10 gigabit ethernet dongle from Orico, which actually works just fine with this. Orico, where your ethernet goes. How's that for product placement? With that out of the way, I wanna talk about RAM, but I need to plug the computers back in to do it. So like I said, even fairly complex video editing is only using right now 15 gigabytes of RAM. And actually that's with pages running, this power thing running, a whole bunch of other stuff happening. And even with the Mac mini, when you go for the M4 Pro model over the base model, it comes with 24 gigs of RAM. The studio is defaulted to 36 gigabytes. I'm gonna run through my regular daily workflow and see if 24 gigs of RAM is enough for a video editor like me. And even though it really only takes like four seconds to open up Photoshop and Lightroom, I just keep them open in the background all the time. With these nice looking thumbnails. So I have the screen kind of zoomed in so that the camera could pick up all of these stats. I didn't want to be screen recording to mess up the stats. But I'm going to just open programs and we're going to keep peeking at the memory used to see if it ever goes into swap. Right now there is zero bytes of swapped used. One thing Macs have gotten really good at with this newer unified memory system on the Apple Silicon chips is RAM management. Even if you've got a bunch of programs open, if Photoshop is hanging out in the background but you've moved over to a bunch of Chrome tabs, your Mac is going to really quickly compress the memory from Photoshop and start using it on Chrome. I'm gonna go nuts and I'm actually gonna go to YouTube and just open up a bunch of these videos just to make it fair. So what, we got nine Chrome tabs open. Make sure they all get to load. Well, that one's an ad. That's noisy. Only up to 18 gigabytes of RAM now. I'm gonna leave these all running. And it can do that. It can compress the RAM pretty much instantly. So right now we're working with about two gigabytes of compressed RAM. So you can actually have more programs open than you might think because it will compress the RAM you're not actively using until you go back to those programs and it needs it back. Swap down here is when you've used up all of your RAM and your computer needs to read and write to your SSD and use that as extra RAM, virtual RAM. That's when things start to slow down noticeably. That's what always used to happen on MacBook Airs when you only had eight eight gigabytes of RAM. So more RAM will not make your computer any faster until you've run out. Like a 128 gig RAM version of this Mac Studio won't run any faster than this 36 gig RAM version of Mac Studio if all I'm doing is Final Cut Pro and Photoshop and I'm not using up all the RAM. They'll run at the same speed. So looking at the RAM usage, where are we at? 18 gigs. I've got Photoshop, Final Cut Pro, Lightroom, Chrome. This thing's called MX Power Gadget. It's uh, it's just what shows these little stats. But I'll keep going. I need my mail open, my messages, a calculator. How about some Safari windows so I can download those sweet PNG files of whatever I might be talking about. Maybe I even want the Photos app open so I can grab a picture I might've taken with my iPhone. We've got all this going on. Look at how many apps I have open. All of these apps are open at once and we are at 17 gigs, under 18 gigabytes of RAM. It's got three and a half gigs compressed. But everything's gonna keep running like this full speed. And I want you to remember that I've even got, what, nine Chrome tabs open all with videos that are currently playing. That's great. So there's still, with all that, there's still a ton of headroom that I guess will just get eaten up with even more tabs open in Chrome for a lot of you. Still looking at you, Grace. She's so bad with Chrome tabs. And actually, sidebar, Chrome tabs are much greedier than Safari tabs when it comes to RAM. Each Chrome tab, each one of these different Chrome tabs that are open treats it as a separate instance of Chrome, so they don't share resources back and forth. Safari, if you've got a page like this ad open for a long time and you haven't gone to it, it's gonna basically unload all that RAM, let it be used somewhere else, and if you go back to it, it'll reload it really quick. But anyway, for the way I use a computer, 24 gigs of RAM is plenty. That said though, five years ago, 16 gigs of RAM was plenty, and that's no longer true for me. RAM is one of the very best future-proofing features you can buy when you first get your Mac. So if you wanna keep this thing around for seven years before jumping into the M12 Mac Mini, that thing better have arms and legs and do laundry by then. I could see a justification for bumping it up to the 48 gigabytes, which is the next size Apple offers in the mini. One place I did notice that swap gets used almost instantly is with Blender. I don't personally do any 3D modeling myself, but I was messing with Blender, just trying to find things that were actually quicker, messing around with the Mac Studio versus the M4 Pro Mac mini. And since these computers share RAM with the CPU and the GPU, and Blender fully loads its models into RAM, the little models, like this little diorama thing, loads really fast, and actually runs really smoothly. But some of the bigger models, A, they're real choppy, but the moment you hit render, Blender is gonna eat up all of your available RAM right away, so more RAM will always make it run more fast. And more GPU will also make it render a lot faster and just like run around the scene a lot faster. Without really knowing anything about it, I'm gonna open the same scene 
on both computers. On the Mac Studio, it's using 30, 31 gigs of memory. On the M4 Pro, it's only using 21 gigs of memory. So it's gonna suck up all the available memory and just run better with more. Let's hit render really quick on both of these. Oh, we're way into the swap on this guy. 10 gigs of swap used. That's not good. And looking at the samples, 112 to 47, this is more than twice as fast. We're looking at almost three times as fast. 144 to 80, back to about twice as fast. Not gonna thermal throttle at all though, that's good. 200 to 100. So this is gonna render this out about twice as fast and use 10 gigs more of RAM. Very possible, I just don't know anything about Blender and I don't know what I'm doing and I just used all the wrong settings. I think my main takeaway with how I use computers, after trying to feel the studio actually feeling any faster, so with Final Cut Pro, if you did a blind editing test with these two computers and you just didn't know which one you were using, with any of the 200 or so videos I've put up on YouTube, I would not be able to tell which of these two computers I'm using while video editing. I know this isn't just about video editing, but I guess that's probably the hardest thing I ask a computer to do personally me, exporting. Exporting does go a lot faster on the studio, but using these two computers feels exactly the same. That's a fact. And actually with Lightroom here, I'm gonna set up a 418 raw photo export. Let's see how these two things compare with that. All of these photos, select all, take all of the same photos, select all, and new, new, new folder. 80% quality, so it's gotta chew through and do a little bit of JPEGing. This computer, the M4 Pro is using 15 gigs of RAM. The M4 Max is using, oh, it was using 20 for a second, now it's using 18 gigs of RAM. This is down to 13 gigs of RAM. This is up to 18. So this is using more RAM to do it. It is pinning the GPUs pretty good. This GPU is jumping around 97%, 99%, 90%. So it's using the GPU, it's using the CPU. It's actually starting to heat up a little bit. Nowhere near the thermal throttle though. I wouldn't say nowhere near it, but it's definitely not gonna get to it. Looking at the progress bars, this guy's almost already done. And that's it. The Mac Studio is completely done. This guy's just about halfway done. So with exporting photos, like big raw photos in Lightroom, this computer is about twice as fast. So using the computer, won't feel any different. It's gonna be this exporting stuff, and if it's long, even though this is twice as fast, for both of them, this only took like five minutes. This just did it in like two and a half minutes. So the GPU and the extra RAM do go a long way with large volume exports. And the extra, this has double the media engines, so exporting Final Cut Pro is also quite a bit faster. But generally, when I hit export, that's when I go off and find a snack somewhere, so those five minutes really doesn't make much of a difference. But if your main job is just exporting thousands of photos every day, all day long, then your choice is clear. It's the Mac Studio. With the Mac Mini, people like to talk a lot about thermal throttling. And it seems like the thermal throttling issue is literally just fan spin up lag. Let me explain. When I do a Cinebench test, the first test with the multi-core, let's just do it on both. Oh, you can look down here for utilization, you can look here for the frequency, and then you can look here for temperatures, and this is basically the frequency is gonna be a straight line on the Mac Studio. Over on the Mac Mini, as soon as it gets hot, the frequency goes down. See, this one is at 3.89, that's pretty much maxed out, and it's gonna stay at 3.89 forever. The Mac Mini, already has dropped to 3.4. It's already third wheel throttling because the fan takes so long to spin up. I have this thing here. The fan is still only 2,500 RPMs. It's gonna get to about 3,000 RPMs. And once it does, it's actually gonna cool back down and the thermal throttling is gonna stop. And I can prove that. So if I wait for the fan to really get going, which it has now, if I stop this test and then before the fan slows back down, I just start it back up again. Now, the frequency of the CPU cores is 3.91, which is the same, actually a little tiny bit higher than the Mac Studio. And it's actually gonna hold a higher frequency for the rest of the test because it started with the fan spinning so it didn't ever like hit that initial thermal throttle and freak out to slow it down. It is dropping down a little tiny bit but it didn't, before it dropped down to 3.4 and now it's only dropped down to 3.7 and it looks like it's sort of stabilized. I'm gonna let this cook for a second to see if I'm right about this but it seems like the thermal throttling happens because of fan lag. It's still a little thermal throttle. This guy is still running at 3.9 and this one's running at 3.7 and a half, but that is minimal. 3.75, 3 3.9, yeah, 96% of the speed of this one. Individual cores, I mean, this has less cores. Yeah, it's gonna stay the same. It's gonna stay at 3.77. It's actually gonna climb to 3.8 over time. Ooh, am I bleeding? So that's just an interesting thing I found while I was testing stuff out. Over on the Mac Studio, it's obviously a thermal monster. There was zero thermal throttling. There will never be any thermal throttling. So. Hopefully all of this has helped you in your choice if you're stuck between these two computers for some reason. But just like how I don't need this donut from Publix, I can calorically afford it because I went for a jog and did some pull-ups this morning. So I'm gonna have it anyway. Similarly, I don't need this Mac Studio at all. I can barely make the argument that I need the M4 Pro over the M4 base model Mac Mini, but I want it. And you know, 
When you really think about it, I'm the most important person in my whole life. I'll spend more time with me than anyone else. I should do things for no other reason than to make me happy sometimes, right? Right? Oh, that's some good smoke. This is the right amount of haze. I keep screwing up my haze every time I make a video. 